AI optimizing your website. Today, guys, I want to share with you another amazing use case of leveraging Open Interpreter, which is, in my opinion, the best framework currently available that allows you a ton of flexibility and is very effective and don't doesn't only promise but actually delivers. I will share the link to the GitHub repository in the show, in the in the YouTube video description. Uh, if you've watched my other videos, you already know about Open Interpreter. Basically, Open Interpreter lets you run LLM codes locally. It can adjust your files locally, and it can also um, browse the internet. And it's very effective, and it's pretty amazing to be honest. So what I wanted to do today is see if I can use or leverage Open Interpreter in order to optimize uh, my wife's website. Um, my wife has a website in Hebrew since we are Israeli, uh, we are from Israel, about digital nomadism, uh, philosophy and marketing. And she doesn't like messing around with the technical stuff. So I often um, assist her and help her, help her with anything related to optimization and the backend stuff like this. Now, the website is built with WordPress and we haven't maintained it for a while. So again, I wanted to see if I can leverage Open, uh, open Interpreter because I didn't want to start doing stuff uh, manually. Um, and there's not a, we don't have a ton of traffic, so it doesn't really make sense to hire someone. And most of the metrics in the website are pretty good. There is like a very like good bounce rate, um, good time on page. So it's not as if the website sucks, but still every once in a while you want to see that you maintain and optimize everything. So what I did today using Open Interpreter, and this was amazingly fast and effective, was image compressing, which I'm guessing if your guys have a website, you know how important it is to compress images. Testing the internal links, um, Often we change uh, stuff in the website and then some buttons or internal links in the website are forgotten and we, didn't, we don't update the, the slugs or the URLs and this way we can have broken links. So this is what I also did, tested the internal links and also conducted a speed test of uh, the most important pages and based on the results we can then go ahead and optimize. Um, now let me show you how exactly I did so and the results. So basically um, we used Open Interpreter and the first thing I did was image compressing. So I asked Open Interpreter to do the following. Can you help me with downloading the first five images that appear on ilfreedomcaptains.com to, uh, this is the folder, then compare, compress and convert the images to WebP files the file name should contain the original image file name plus the amount of kilobytes reduced during the compression. I don't think I need to explain this. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So the response was, sure, I can help you with that. Here's the plan. We will use Python requests and beautiful soup libraries to scrape the website and get the URLs of the first five images. We will download these images and save them to the specified directory. We will use the pillow library, which is a Python library for um, editing images to convert and compress these images to WebP format. And we will rename the files to include the amount of kilobyte reduced during the compression. Let's start by installing the necessary libraries. So it installed the uh, beautiful soup and pillow. I had them both. It, it encountered some sort of an error, but it uh, immediately fixed it. And then he said, okay, great. The necessary libraries are installed. Now let's move to the next step of the plan, which is to scrape the website and get the URLs of the first five images. We will use request a beautiful soup for this. And he wrote the request. He said, we have success successfully scraped the URLs of the first five images from the website. I just wanted to scrape the first five images because I didn't see a point of doing this for all images at the moment. I just, it's just a proof of concept. So, however, one of the URLs is a Base64 encoded image, which is not a URL, but the image data itself encoded in Base64. 
So it, it uh, then took, uh, scraped another image, great. We now have the URL of the first five images from the website. The next step is download these images and save them to the specified directory. Let's do that. So it wrote the Python script and it encountered an error because the image URL is not valid. It returns a 404, uh, it probably uh, an issue with the fact that uh, it doesn't, it can't scrape the images from, because, because it encountered uh, 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 the images are delivered using a CTM. So this probably what encountered the image and you will see in a moment, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I need to um, take a breath. <sighs> You will see in a moment um, what it did to bypass this issue. Again, it uh, had another issue. It seems like there's still an issue with one of the image URLs. The server is returning a 404 not found error for this URL, which means that the image does not exist at the specified location. To handle this, we can modify the code to skip any images that return a 404. So it changed the code, adjusted the code, and Mind you, I didn't do anything since giving the first prompt. At the end of the video, I will tell you how much this whole thing cost. So images downloaded successfully, but it said it seemed like there was an issue with downloading the images. All the URLs returned a 404 not found. This could be due to the website blocking our request because they look like they're coming from a script. To bypass this, we can modify the headers of our request to make them look like they are coming from a web browser, as if we're doing like a save ad, like right clicking and saving as the image. And it did so. And we'll go down, 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 down. Images download successfully. Great, the images have been downloaded successfully. Now let's move to the next step of the plan, which is to convert and compress these images to WebP format. We will use the pillow library for this. We will also calculate the amount of kilobytes reduced during the compression and rename the files to include this information. Let's do that. So it's, it did exactly what we wanted. Great, the images have been converted and compressed. The file names have been updated to include the amount of kilobytes reduced during the compression. Now you can check the folder to see the compressed images. Let's see the folders. It's FC images. It's here. Okay, so as you can see, some of the images are in, in uh, Hebrew. So this is why it has such a weird name. But you can see here, for example, Bobby Birch Unsplash. This is an image from Unsplash. It, it was originally a JPEG file, 20 kilobytes. And you can see here it was converted. The same file name. Now it's a WebP file name. And you can see the amount of reduced kilobytes. So it says that it reduced 5.17 kilobytes. We can also the same here. Journey was originally 23 kilobytes. Now journey is 18 kilobytes and it says it reduced five kilobytes. So look how fast and efficient that was. I can just, you can just go ahead to a specific website. It's better if it's yours because you, you actually have the permissions, um, but not necessarily. You can use it for other websites as well. And with one click, you can download all the images and get use and compress all the images sizes and also get the calculation of how much was the reduction. So this is pretty amazing. Now let's move to the next task that we wanted to do, which was internal linking checking. So I said to the algorithm or open interpreter, great, the images, uh, awesome. I said, awesome. Now please find all internal links and buttons in the homepage of the website. Return an Excel file that has three columns, link type, text, and destination. So we said, sure, I can help you with that. Here's the plan. We will use Python request and beautiful soup to scrape the website and find all internal links and buttons. We will create a list, a list of dictionaries where each dictionary contains the link type, text, and destination. And we will convert this list into uh, an Excel file later on. So it 
This is, we have successfully scraped all the internal links and buttons from the website. Now let's convert this data into a pandas data frame and then export it to Excel file. We will save the Excel file in the current working directory with the name internal links and buttons. By the way, I didn't tell it anything about the file name. It's the file name that he chose. It created the file name. Great, the data has been exported to a file name named internal links and buttons. Um, and then I asked it to move it to the same directory. So we said, sure, move the Excel files to the directory. And let's see what was the result. So internal links and buttons. I have it here open already, internal links and buttons. And as you can see, it created this Excel file. I think it might have gotten this slightly wrong, but obviously with a few tweaks, it could be amazing. But still, we have all the destinations. We have the this, the text probably. It's probably the text of the button and also the destination. And everything is well organized in an Excel file. I also did a test, a test yesterday for scraping all the buttons on a, on a landing page and, and testing what, where do this button lead and it worked uh, better than this time. But still, um, this is pretty good. We still have a, a good understanding of all the destinations in the website. And afterwards we can ask it again. And you'll see in a moment what I did with the sp page speed. Uh, test, we can ask it to enter all the URLs and see if any link is broken. So this was the second task, mission accomplished. And the third task was to speed test a few of the, of the pages. So what I asked it to do was, can you please enter all pages that appear on this page? and check the page loading time. Create a table with the link to the page and the page loading time and place it in the same folder. And it answered, sure, I can help you with that. Here's the plan. Use Python request and beautiful soup libraries to scrape the web page and get all the links. For each link, measure the page loading time, create a table with the link and the page loading time, save the table to a, to a file in the specified directory. It wrote the script and initially it found 140 links on the page. However, all, not all of, of these links are relevant. So it made a few adjustments, a few more adjustments, and then it found 60 articles on the page. Now let's move on to the next step of the plan, measuring the page loading time for each link. We'll send a GET request to each link and measure the time it takes to get the response. This will give us an approximation of the page loading time. Let's do this for the first link to test the approach. So we did it for the first link. It got, it was, uh, the result was 3.6 seconds. The page loading time for the first article is approximately 3.61. Now let's repeat this process for all the articles uh, links. We store the links and the corresponding page loading time in a, in a dictionary, and then it moved to an Excel file. It did this. It took it. Uh, it took like five minutes, more or less, and it got twenty-eight out of sixty links. And it all it placed them all in a, an Excel. And let's see the Excel file, the end result, page loading times. So we have the link, and we have the loading time. As you can see here, I can now sort it by loading time. So the premium program and navigation program or like landing pages that are dense with uh, videos and testimonials. So probably therefore the loading time is, is higher. But as you can see, this was very, very fast and a very effective way to crawl your whole website and get a lot of data um, about uh, page speed and other stuff. This whole thing cost me 181 so almost two dollars for conducting this uh, web website optimization which i think is very uh, cheap because it saved me a ton of time and it's very valuable 
there are a lot of other things that you can do with uh, open interpreter when it comes to we your website optimization so probably as i said going over all of these pages then compressing all of the images afterwards analyzing all the buttons you can also analyze all the internal links you can also see any meta description any seo stuff related to h1 h2's list basically anything you can do with beautiful beautiful soup which is a python library that scrapes the website and it allows you a lot of freedom and flexibility and back in the days it was very i mean not very but it was more challenging to leverage beautiful soup because you had to know how to code and how to uh, run python scripts and every modification or adjustment to the code was very tedious but as you saw here using open interpreter which is so amazing uh, it took me less than two dollars i got this up and running within like 20 minutes of back and forth um, and it was only two sentences or three no maybe three or four sentences that i requested from open interpreter and the rest was conducted on autopilot and as you saw the results are amazing they are pretty precise with a few more iterations it would have been perfect but for me just for the proof of concept this is enough i guess that's it for today guys obviously if you have any questions please leave them in the comment section below if you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and until next time keep on automating